Hi folks, I've got a pretty different project today. You can see this is in a guitar pedal box, but there are no foot switches or anything. And on one side there's some XLRs, and on the other side there's some quarter inches. So this is in fact a direct box that I'm experimenting with. And what happened was I needed some for a festival that I'm running live sound for in September and I don't own any direct boxes. I've never used them before. And while well, I could just go buy all the ones I need, I don't really know where the fun is in that. So let's open this up, take a look, and uh, just remember throughout the video, this is an experiment for me. This was new technology in some ways for me, even though a lot of the pieces of it are familiar. So here's the inside of it. I've got a transformer right here. This was just something I had lying around. I wanted I wanted to experiment with having a transformer on one of the circuits. This one over here is going to be a circuit that'll look a little familiar to some of you. Uh, a, a little different than the last version of it that I posted on the channel. And then this one over here, this should look familiar to pretty much everyone um, after we draw it out. And we are actually going to draw them. Over here we've got our XLR plugs. These are of course just for getting a balanced signal out, and the way a balanced signal works is that it's noise cancelling um, for the length of the cable. If you've, uh, if you've ever wondered, one of the reasons for a direct box is just to be able to run long cable lengths without adding extra noise. And over here, these are just, uh, these are just our quarter-inch plugs, mono plugs. We're just plugging in a guitar or a mandolin or something with a passive pickup, and the idea is to phantom power it from the XLR plugs so that you don't have to have an external power source. One thing I want to add is that this is not the simplest version of a direct box you can make. The simplest version is just a high ratio transformer that takes the input signal, which is mono, and sends it to the XLR plug. Um, for a good sounding one is usually expensive, so that's one reason why you might not want to go the entirely passive route. One problem with these active circuits is, of course, that active circuitry adds some noise, and there are some other consequences that we can talk about a little later in the video. Most of what I've learned about this I learned on, uh, on a group DIY thread that people were nice enough to link to a bunch of circuits for me, as well as um, give me a little bit of an idea of what's out there to buy commercially, and how oftentimes the uh, the best route to go with a direct box is to buy a commercial build because it can be very hard to buy to build something that's roadworthy and less expensive than even a, a very good one you can buy. So for ones you can buy, um, most people are familiar with Radial. I'm of course not going to recommend any particular product because I, as I said, I've never used direct boxes really in in my live playing. But for instance, this one, I got it on sale for less than the cost of the transformer. This has a Cinemag transformer in it, and I can't build anything close to this for the price I paid, even though it was quite a bit below the normal, the normal uh, street price for it. Let's draw out the simpler circuit. And the simpler circuit, when I say that, I'm referring to the one with the transformer. I think most people who build guitar pedals aren't fooling with transformers very often, but they happen to make uh, quite a few circuits very, very simple. So one thing that's going to happen pretty much always is we're going to have our XLR plug over here. And this is pin 1. This is always ground. And this is pin 2 er, and pin 3. and these are hot and cold. Um, if you were taking a balanced signal to a balanced signal, you'd have to pay attention to these. But we don't actually care which, which one's hot and which one's cold, because we're just taking a mono signal. So that is our jack over here. And this is the sleeve. And that's always, that always goes to ground. And then we've got our tip, which carries our signal. These two pins, three and two, these carry our, our 48 volts. 
So we'll just mark plus 48 volts, plus 48 volts. This is over in the, uh, in the preamp. Here's a 6.8K resistor to each of these pins. Um, so that limits the current. So when you take this, when you take this, you have to remember that you're not going to get a lot of current out of your phantom power, but it's enough to power a microphone. It ought to be enough to power, you know, a circuit that we need for a guitar or a piezo pickup or something. So the thing we want to do when we come from there is I'm going to take a 2.2. Let's write it like this. 2K2 resistor from each of these pins. And that is going to form our voltage point. And then I want to limit the current a little further with a 10K. And we need to filter our power. So just like in guitar pedals, just like in microphones, in any active circuit, if you're if you're running DC voltage, you want to filter it. So we could get we could get a little more comprehensive here, but the only thing I really care about is going from here to ground. So I'm I I happen to have some small 100 microfarad capacitors in my box that are you know this has to be about 50 volts. Um, you could do 47 volt, 47 microfarads. You could even do 10 microfarads. Um, anywhere between 10 to 100 microfarads. That's going to filter our power just just as well as we need. You could also put a film cap here, just like you have in in a guitar pedal. But um, we don't really need to do that. Um, there's also something missing here that we'll talk about after we get to the impedance conversion circuit, but. What do we need for impedance conversion? Well, we know that we want to use, we, we know that we want a high input impedance for a piezo pickup. While something as high as like 200, which is very common in commercial direct boxes like, like this one that I showed, um, uh, 200 kilo ohms is still pretty low for a piezo pickup. It'll sound good, but, um, but in, in preamps that or for an electric guitar or something, um, I have typically used, you know, one meg, which is the input impedance of a of a guitar amp, or even even higher, sometimes as high as ten meg. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a uh, two point two meg resistor here, and that's gonna go to ground, and that's gonna be our input impedance. There's, we don't have to worry about any, any direct current, so I'm going to skip the input capacitor, although you can use one if you want a little extra, um, a little extra safety. And then here, I'm going to have a FET. So this is our gate, this is our drain, and this is our source. We're going to take the output from our source, and we're going to need a pretty big capacitor here, but um, but I'd prefer to use film. So the biggest film capacitor I had that in my box of parts was 2.2 microfarads, um, and it's and it's still fairly small. It's just a normal box cap. You can see it. You can see it in here. Just normal, just normal box cap. It's not a. It's not anything super big. And then, and then we're going to have to figure out, well, what are we going to do with our output? Because this is not a balanced signal. This is still an unbalanced signal. The last thing we need to do is we need to limit our current to ground. So uh, you, could use, you could use a lot of stuff here, but um, 4.7K is a pretty good value. Um, I just want to. I just want to emphasize this circuit is simple enough, and I've built this enough that I didn't even draw myself a layout. I I just did it on freehand on perfboard. Um, so you obviously you haven't seen anything unusual. This is just a FET buffer, and the only thing we have to do after we've 
connected ourselves to ground here and the power up here, we're not taking any signal out of here. So, you know, we were able to just filter the power directly at the drain. Um, the only thing we need to do here is we want to balance the output. And let's, uh, let's just kind of cordon off things here because um, there are multiple ways you could do this. One is you could have you'd have some hypothetical active circuit. So, so let's say, say, do we want an active one? Well, that would be you know you'd have to split the signal somehow, and that might be you know a FET that sends it to out one, out two. Um, that could split your signal. Um, these would be uh, bipolar junction transistors, BJTs. They'd have a very good output impedance that would be more than adequate for driving a driving an output circuit. You could also have you could also have a chip. You could use use one of your uh, one of your op amps, and you could take the negative and the positive outputs. Um, you could you could use a dedicated chip. There are chips that are sold that give you a balanced output and they're very low noise. Um, I if you're if you're serious about making something, I would highly recommend looking into those. Uh, THAT makes makes one of those. Um, and you can even buy you can even buy them as fully built modules for like less than ten dollars so like i said if you're really serious about doing something that isn't fully diy with parts you have lying around your house which is what this project was um i'd highly recommend looking into into a, a professional solution like that but i like diying stuff with things that i have lying around my house so that's what we're doing here and one of the things i had lying around my house was the transformer so we're going to take our output and this transformer happens to have two coils, but I've tied them together. This one's going to go to ground, and this is going to be our input to the transformer. And then on the other side of the coil, we're going to get our balanced output. And I've also tied these together. Um, when I tested this, it was a four. It says that it's uh, four point five k on on the on the secondary. This is usually used as a step up transformer, but I used it as a step down. You can just flip it around backwards um, to one k. And then, well. We've already we've already decoupled our our circuit. We have no DC, and we really just need to make sure that you know if we do put DC on our transformer, it's going to be equal. So at this point, all we have to do is take one of these and send it up to the hot, and take another one. And send it up to the cold and that's it that is a an impedance conversion circuit and a balanced output from a transformer very very simple circuit uh, we filtered our phantom power it's already filtered in the preamp but we want to filter it in the circuit too um, and in fact this is this would be good enough for certain types of microphones too if you don't need any gain at all if you can just take a source follower that's what you're doing but for those of us who build guitar pedals um this is you know this is a pretty bog standard circuit for us so let's look at the second circuit and let me grab a new piece of paper the second circuit in this box is actually the first one I built, and part of the reason I built it is because I was already familiar with it and happened to have a layout, and I knew that it had an impedance conversion circuit and a balanced output, which is all I needed for a um, direct box. Now, there are, there are a few other things I'm going to say about this one 
that, are, that make it really different from this one, but first let's just draw out the circuit. And the circuit I used is the Alice microphone circuit. This is usually used little electric capsules that you need to present a very high input impedance to and then you have to take the output of your impedance conversion circuit and give it a balanced a balanced output. Um, so we're going to have our input. And this is going to be the tip of our of our quarter inch, and the sleeve is going to go to ground, and then. We're going to go to the gate of a FET again. So that's our gate. And there's our drain and our source. Now, this is going to be an active circuit on this side. And in addition to using this as an impedance conversion, we're also going to use it as a signal splitter. So in the one I built, I believe I also used 2.2 2 meg, but um, you can use 1 meg or, um, or 10 meg if you, if you want to go really nuts. Um, I, think, I think I might go back in and just do 1 meg. I, I'm sort of envisioning this one being a little more useful with, with electric guitars than with acoustic guitars based on its performance. Um, we have to draw our XLR outputs over here again. So this is pin 1. It's going to go to ground. This is pin 2, pin 3. This is cold, hot, and um, so we know that we're going to have to limit the current here. This is going to be a 2.2k. Oh, a 2k2 and we're gonna have to balance that up here so and then we're gonna have to have something up here for dealing with the power gonna be a power circuit and then I'm gonna take this down here give myself a little more room uh, we have to decouple these and we want to use all matched parts. So this is going to be it's going to be a 470 nanofarads. And you can see that's the uh, that's the big red ones. Um, sorry, a little dark. That's the big red ones right there because those happen to be the parts I had lying around. But you do kind of want to use foam caps if possible. And then after decoupling that, we're eventually going to come over here and we're going to come to a PNP transistor. And another PNP transistor. Not used to drawing this signal. <laughs> um, now, in the original Alice mic, the uh, emitters of these bipolar tra transistors went directly to the pins, but I and most other people like to add 47 ohms or something like that to the output. Um, it helps a little with noise. So that goes to 2, not to 1. <laughs> 1 is ground. Um, the other thing you can do here is you can add uh, add 22 nanofarads to ground, um, but I'm I'm not going to draw absolutely everything that you can do to the circuit. You can take a look at the circuit for the Shep's microphone, which is which is what this is this is derived from. The collectors are tied together, and the inputs just need to get a resistor goes to the uh, to the collector so these are both 100k and you do want to match these um, but these are just your bias transistors 
there's your input, there's your input, and um, except for the fact that this value is very, very different in a microphone, this is a one gig resistor in a, in a microphone, this is pretty close to how you would normally do a microphone. Um, the other thing we need to do here is we need to figure out our power. So we know that we need to clean up our power before before it goes to the drain here, and we need and we want to make sure that everything's as clean as possible for these two outputs. So one thing we can do right here, this is a fairly low um, uh, voltage area, so it would be very easy to have a 100 microfarad to ground. Um, we need a little resistance before we get there, so we can use a 470 or a 330, which is, I believe, the original value in Alice. Um, but any sort of small resistor right here, pretty quickly. Um, and we can filter a little more here. A 10 microfarad before we even before we do anything. Um, so right now this power section, this power junction right here, and this power junction right here are are separated by some resistance. And this one's this one's a lot cleaner, but um, but this one's reasonably clean. And one thing we wanted we want to do is we're gonna put a zener. Right here, another symbol I'm not used to drawing. <laughs> That's going to be a crude regulator. And zeners in microphones, um, a 12 volt zener would would be a little noisy. You might you might be able to notice it, but um, but here it's pretty much good enough. So we've got we've got a fairly clean output from from here. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to run a 6k8 to uh what's the best way to do this? Let's hop over there. Come around here. Okay. So not the absolute cleanest way to draw the circuit, but um but it's not too bad. So this is our this is our PowerPoint for the collectors of our source followers. Um, so kind of like how we had a sort how I sorry, not a source follower, an emitter follower. So kind of like how we had a source follower as our low impedance output um, in the FET circuit in the bipolar junction transistor circuit, this is actually very, very, very low um, output impedance. So here it's probably around 300, which is, that's that's more than good enough for any modern microphone input, um, just to be clear. But we did actually step it down right here. So um, so it's gonna end up being around, you know, like under under 100, which is which is really ridiculously low. And you you know you can you can drive a very very long cable chain there without losing any signal. Um, this will be this will be pretty much the same way. Um, and that that's it. That that is the entirety of this circuit. We converted the impedance and then we we made a balanced output. So let's talk about what some of the uh, some of the drawbacks are compared to this circuit. So in this circuit, um, we can actually lift the ground from um, from our outputs. Um, I haven't done a ground lift at all because I need to research it more. But um, one of the pieces of advice I was given was that if you if you don't do a if you don't do a transistor uh, or, or like an active output section and you use a transformer, the transformer allows you to do a ground lift. And that's something you'll find in, you know, any transistor coupled prof professional, um, professional build. So in the warm audio passive, when I have sitting right here, this has, this has a switch that says lift or ground. And, um, 
And you can get away with that because it's solely a transistor. Uh, I mean, a transformer. Um, as far as whether you can do that in the combination um, active and passive, I, I haven't researched that enough. But, you know, like I said, this is new technology to me, so, so I don't know everything about it. Um, one thing I have noticed, and we're, we're going to plug this in and listen to it, but, one, but just as a little bit of, of a heads up, we used a step-down transformer here, so naturally we're going to get lower, we're, we're going to get less output from, from this circuit. But I've also noticed this is a fairly high output circuit, and it's also noticeably more more signal to noise. It's not it's not too bad. Um, I've also noticed that this one does seem to be a little more prone to picking up some some environmental noise, even though it's in a metal box, and even though it's it's getting you know it's not a long cable from my electric guitar. So let's go ahead and plug the electric guitar in. It happens to be the the instrument I have lying around with a passive high impedance um, requiring pickup. Uh, I have a guitar that is currently in the shop um, that has a passive pickup that I, I would have wanted to use for the test, but um, no such luck today. So let's go ahead and put the, put the top back on. And I'll see you in a moment. All right, to get a little bit of a baseline, I have hooked up my electric guitar to one of the inputs of my Fireface. So this is going to be an instrument input on the interface, and the specs say that the input impedance of this is about 200k. So pretty typical for a direct box. Um, not very typical for what an electric guitar wants to wants to see. So let's go ahead and take a listen to that. And I'm going to disappear for a second so that I can hook this up to the direct box. Um, one thing I do notice when I play directly through my interface is that the um, since the input impedance is not very high, the guitar does sound very rounded off. Um, that was the bridge, I, I mean, I'm sorry, the neck and middle, middle pickups, so it's a little rounded off to begin with. But um, if we go ahead and change to the neck... I'm, I'm sorry, the bridge and metal pickup, we can hear it a little better. So, normally that would be a very bright and cutting sound, but it sounds very rolled off direct to the interface. So, I've plugged into the direct box that uses the transformer, and um, let me turn off my microphone so that we're not getting any microphone bleed. So one thing I can definitely hear, and I mean, honestly, I do not know whether this is going to come across in the video. I can hear um, a little bit more sparkle in the top end, especially when I'm playing with a pick. It's it's more noticeable to me. So let's go ahead and switch which direct box we're using. So we are now using the Alice, and let's go ahead and give that a listen.
so to my ears, the Shopes based circuit, the, the Alice microphone circuit essentially, sounds brighter to me than the transformer based version. It could be something to do with the with the extra signal that this retains. Um, I did turn down the gain in the preamp circuit that I applied when I when I used the transformer version, which has a step down in it. Um, it could be that the transformer itself changes the sound, or it could be that maybe the signal is distorting and that's adding that's adding some extra high end, or it could be that maybe the signal actually sounds thinner. And all of this is stuff that, that I think is worth um, worth exploring on my own. But it, it, it is helpful to hear that the circuits sound different and they also sound different than what's on my interface. And in both cases, the, um, the sound retains a lot more of, of the high-end sparkle, especially when I'm playing with a pick. Um, the, I mean, one of the caveats, of course, is that I'm in my studio, I have lots of guitar pedals, and I also have preamps that I've made that have high input impedance, so I don't actually need a phantom-powered direct box for recording purposes, but I would want something like this for a situation where I'm playing live or running sound live and someone has an instrument that does not have its own preamp, so a guitar that has a piezo pickup or a um or maybe someone wants to run their their electric guitar um directly into into the board or something. Um some people some people do actually do that, especially at open mics and stuff like that. So one of my goals was to figure out whether it was better to buy or build. Um, one thing I can say is that building, as opposed to buying, does get me a much higher input impedance, something much closer to a guitar amp or a guitar pedal, um, also much closer to the preamps I've, I've built where they have a direct input that is explicitly for the purpose of plugging in my bass direct or plugging in a guitar direct without needing to use a direct box. And most commercial products, like, um, I mean, I can't build this cheaper than I got it, but the street price, I, I mean, I could build this cheaper than the typical street price, even though, you know, I maybe wouldn't have as nice of a box and, um, maybe wouldn't have all the features that are that are on this but um but price isn't always isn't always everything and in the case of this i mean it does improve plugging a guitar into a particularly low impedance um mixing board or something but it's it's not perfect and um there are active direct boxes that don't really have better input impedance and I could use a guitar pedal or something which is obviously made to handle the input from an electric guitar but can also usually handle the input from from a piezo pickup like for my mandolin or something but um but it's it, those usually require an external power source so it's very nice to have a phantom powered something that is similar to a guitar pedal and um so overall i'm not disappointed that i built it i do think that the projects um that i used could <laughs> use some improvement i mean one of them i i mentioned that i literally built the circuit freehand on perf board just knowing exactly what i needed to do and knowing how to hook up the transformer and it's you know it sounds okay but maybe there are ways to improve it maybe there's a better transformer to use maybe there's a cheaper transformer certainly has to be something cheaper than a vintage utc transformer to use for a circuit like this especially because i don't need a step down or a step up and one-to-one -one transformers tend to be pretty cheap um the alice microphone circuit there's some noise that i need to debug in that circuit and maybe it turns out that if i'm going to go for a completely active direct box that there's just a better solution to use overall maybe it uses a, maybe it uses a chip maybe it uses a dedicated balanced output chip for the output section is and, and there aren't any discrete transformers involved in I uh, sorry discrete 
transistors involved at all. So, um, so lots of stuff to explore, and um, I do hope to maybe build one or two more of these, um, even though I don't know if they'll all get boxed up. But um, yeah, this was kind of a fun project, so that's why I wanted to share it. Have a good one.